Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. We find out why Gandhi is a dick this week on Boss Battle. Welcome everybody to Boss Battle number 117, a show in which the writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together and talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby F. J. Tom, but before we get to the cool peppermint center of this York peppermint patty of a podcast, let's find out what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> I'm Bobby, running out of things Bobby, to describe the podcast Bobby, as Bobby, in the center Bobby. of things. Uh, this week I achieved... Uh... Destiny. That's about it. Um, it is your destiny. Yeah, that that's about all. I um I I got my my pants scared off in uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh -oh. Um. But yeah, I I, I played uh, Five Nights Five Nights at Freddy's and Destiny. That's it. <laughs> oh no, I played a uh, Russian Simulator, which uh, that'll be one of the Monday Mo Mobile Monday reviews eventually. Um. But is that yeah. a uh, is that a uh, Rusev simulator? No. Oh. Um, but that's about it. I didn't really accomplish anything else. I want a Rusev simulator. <laughs> All right, joining us once again, DJ Lunchbox. What did you achieve this week? Hi, everybody. Uh, it is I, DJ Lunchbox. Uh, this week I stabbed Sauron in his face, killed a few thousand more orcs. I found an epic level Rob Van Dam, and I wiped the wiped the Aztecs off the face of the planet using giant metal death robots. Wow, you sound like you had a week. It was very busy and uh, surprisingly violent. <laughs> Sorg, joining us again, what did you achieve this week? Hey, I... Uh... A lot of superstars. Like I was diehard in the superstars over the weekend. Or, I'm sorry, supercard over the weekend. WWE mm -hmm. supercard uh, to the point where I got second place in the King of the Ring, which nice. got me two more Sergeant Slaughters, which I combined. Uh, I actually did it the wrong way. I combined them and then still had my leveled up Sergeant Slaughter. So I don't think I got the best out of that situation. Um, but but still. Uh, Secret Superstars or Supercard is carrying. Uh, I also started a little type tapped out for DJ Lunchbox, and then found something Thank else you. to do. And then found something else to do before it loaded. That's fine. I'm ah, my attention I'm span. Switching your aliens, actually, as we speak. Also, I, I as just, we speak, just, I'm in the quarterfinals of a King of the Ring. Oh, I look just at you. a bunch of aliens too, and I am also in a King of the Ring, but I am in sixth place right now. So um, it's I, early on. Also, uh, Angry Birds Transformers, so so great, so great, you guys. I wish it wasn't <laughs> a freemium game, though. I wish I could just play it. But um, yeah, like, like give me a five dollar version of that game, and I'll just play it. I'd be okay with that. All right, from the chat, uh, Buddy Landell said he's very close to le hitting the level cap on Destiny. Uh, Wheels has been playing WWE 2K15, which Riz has a review on on the website. Uh, not digging it really. Um, and uh, Brother Sorg said he played a lot of Fallout 3 this week. Um, and I bought Super Smash Brothers uh, for 3DS, uh, which I'm not very good at. <laughs> but I think I'll pick it up and start to, to go pretty well. But I only used like, Mega Man and um, a couple other characters, but it's fun so far. Uh, and I've been playing Super Card, and, and, and I'm trying to get Hugo on Simpsons Papped Out. So Nice. Oh, I got Hugo. Oh, up uh, oh, you got Hugo? Awesome. I did get Hugo. I'm like 20 uh, eggs away, I think. <laughs> something like that. Or a couple fence pieces. Something like that. But yeah, that's fun. 20 that eggs fun. away. <laughs> Only 20 eggs away. <laughs> All right. Chuck, do you want to send us around the net? It is now time for this week's video game. Net, 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 net. net, net. net, net. This week, uh, for the runners up, let's start there. That's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great place to start. What about you guys? I you think want to start there? Place to start. I'm a fan. Uh, the, the Atari ET documentary has a release date. Yes. And it's surprisingly close. Um, as in November 20th on Xbox wow. Live. Nice. I'm going so, to actually watch that. Yes. Um. That will be, yeah, coming out July 20th, Xbox Live. Cool. 
So look out for that because that'll be fun. Right? Yeah. Uh, the Internet Archive has created a, a, a another section to their website called Internet Arcade, and they've uploaded 900-plus arcade games to the website. Um, and essentially, and this answers the question that, that Sorg had uh, when we first discussed this privately on Gchat. Um, it, Sorg, the way they got away with this is because it's a research source. Ah. Um, so they're, they're saying that this will most likely uh, be used as uh, research for writing and remixing uh, mm -hmm. the game to understand context. That's kind of cool. So, I uh, I saw that Paperboy was one of those games. I wonder if Shark Shark is one of them. I don't know. I, anything is possible because Bion Bionic Command is on there too. And, and in our played, discussion, so Street Fighter too. Yeah. Uh, in our discussion, wow. like I originally found the consoles on this one, um, and, and then there's this big story that came out this week about the the the, the, the arcade game versions. So you can go on and play like Sonic the Hedgehog on this thing. Um, yeah. I don't think that I they didn't have much Nintendo for some reason, right? Oh, well, Nintendo it would be the hard one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Nintendo, it's research. Right, right. Um, well, Japanese don't understand that. Yeah, that's true. Um, they just know everything, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they seem really smart. I don't want to mess with them. Don't want to. No, I'm not going to say. Anything. What's that? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Never mind. So, uh, yeah, those are. Both things are listed over there on the website. I'm completely it's playing Street Fighter in my browser right now. Poorly. <laughs> as, as you should be able to. Yeah. This it is, is your God-given awesome. right to play so, Street so Fighter. So now you can't say you don't have video games on your Chromebook. Because you got all right. the video games on your Chromebook. Yeah. That Dalzim. Yeah. Kicked you in the I face. I wonder if I'd be able to play them on the Nexus, if that would be good enough. On the Nexus? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think the buttons. I, I did try to load these on because it's JavaScript, so it technically should. Um, because it's not Flash or anything, and it is like running like the Mame emulator loads on these. So they they have a version that's running in browser of the Mame emulator. Like I remember trying to get the Mame emulator trying to load on like a Pentium machine, and now it's just in your browser. We're good to go. So that, that's awesome. That is uh, awesome. from what it sounds like. I haven't actually gone on there yet, but from what it sounds like, it seems like a, a web browser version of Mint, anyhow. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so. <gasps> oh, X Men Children of the Atom. What if that's one of them? Uh, I don't know. So, Ooh. might have to check that out for research purposes later. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just go on and play. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyhow, let's get to the main, the main, the main, main thing in this post. Uh, so, yeah, it was announced this morning. I found out, uh, three days ago and officially last night at around 10 p.m. that this was happening. Um, and stay tuned to insertcoinbegin.com as we get closer for, uh, more news on this. Uh, but the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra is doing a one-night-only event on January 17th called Pokemon Symphonic Evolution. Hmm. Uh, it will be an evening of symphony music from Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Black, White, X, and Y. Nice. Nice. Um, and if you've never been to a, a Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra video game themed evening, uh, it, it's quite amazing. Um, the, they spend so much time. And uh, let's be fair, uh, the events are created by someone else and brought in, but uh, the symphony, the Pittsburgh Symphony has to learn all the, the cues and everything to go with the video that they have uh, on screen while all this is going on. Um, we I went to the Zelda one with Chris, and it was amazing. So I, I can't wait to see what happens uh, with the Pokemon one. Um, but the tickets, they go on sale November 7th at 9 a.m., which is this Friday. <laughs> and all of the information is available in the link in blog post. Yes. Uh, next up, Valve cemented itself as the greatest game company ever. <laughs> uh, 
Um, they released an update to Team Fortress 2 that added go-karts and bumper cars to the game. Nice. Oh, no. And <laughs> twenty less than 24 hours later, someone created Mario Kart in the game. <laughs> And this is all the stuff that Val said. Here, go play. That's awesome. Yeah. Only Val would do that with their games, too. Yeah, well, I, I, someone, I, I'm someone. i guessing someone sent them an email saying, hey, can you add cars? And then they're like, why not? Here. The only thing they won't do is count to three. Yeah, yeah they, <laughs> they won't count to three. They'll give, you cars. They'll, they'll give you cars. It's the least we can do. Throw cars in there instead of giving <laughs> another game for our franchises. We will skip <laughs> we will skip three and go straight to four <laughs> wheels. Um so yeah, uh, check out the video uh, fifty nine seconds long, but it's uh as close as you're gonna get to Mario Kart in um Team Fortress two. Uh which was brought up that it's probably the closest you're ever gonna get to having a version of Mario Kart on the computer. Nice. Other than a ROM. Um and last but not least, the unofficial pilot of Nick Arcade has been found. What? Unofficial? Um, if you are in your mid to late 20s, mm -hmm. then you remember the show. Or 30s. Yes, but I'm saying that mid to late 20s is probably the youngest that you can be to remember the show yes. as, you, as it airs. Anyhow. If you're in your mid to late twenties and you remember this show as the one on Nickelodeon that if you had to pick only one, it would be the one that you went on. Mm -hmm. um, Legends was, of the Hidden Temple is a toss up too, though. No, but you would I'm pick back Legends of the Hidden Temple, though. You would pick Nick <laughs> <Arcade. not> active. <laughs> you would pick Nick Arcade <laughs> over that. But anyway. hey, that brought us Kabuki Quantum Fighter, which I play extra like. So. <laughs> But, uh, so Nick Arcade was a game show on Nickelodeon based around videos, video games. Um, you led Mikey around the map, so I took him through obstacles, and won 90, uh, 90s Nickelodeon prizes such as Skechers, Ray-Bans, and skateboards and crap. Also, I remember um, the host, I remember the host going like, dun, 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 dun yeah. to the music. But even like was, say, like, is Mikey gonna get caught by the things? Yeah, but that was the that was the, the the host that it ended up being. Okay. Oh, um, was it a different host than the pilot? Yeah, it's a different oh, host wow. than the pilot. Huh. And it, this is uh, the pilot episode of this show is the one that gave us the first public viewing of Sonic the Hedgehog. Jeez. Um, but anyhow, it, it, if you run for Nick Arcade, Nick Arcade was the game show where. Video games for cool prizes, and if your team made it through to the end, you got to actually compete in a video game. You were part of the game, which was basically green screen, where you yeah. people were just yeah. swatting at random flies. That's exactly <laughs> it. You put in front of a green screen and swatted at stuff and jumped over boxes that were also green. Mm -hmm. um, but it was still amazing for the nineties. I remember just being like, you stupid kid, it's right next to you. Yeah. Just swat at it. Turn around. <laughs> you're like, you could have won a Casio keyboard. <laughs> now you're going home with nothing. A Casio keyboard and a Foot Locker gift certificate. Yeah. <laughs> or British Knights, actually. If you would have won, you could have had a shopping spree Toys R Us. A trip but to Space Camp. You get nothing. Well, Space Camp was always double there. Yeah, Space Camp was double there. <laughs> British Knights. I think I was Skechers. Got and Skechers, Ray Bans, <laughs> Casio keyboards, yeah. and Polaroid cameras. KB toys. Yeah. Shopping sprees. <laughs> now we're just remembering our childhood. <laughs> right, right. Every everything they gave away on nineties Nickelodeon yeah, game exactly. shows. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I have for you in this week's edition of video game theme yeah. things from the internet. Net, net, net. net. Thank you, Bobby. All right, thanks, Chachi. Uh, we're going to get to things you you should be made aware of. Uh, for some news bits, WWE 2K15 has a new mode, but it's only for next gen consoles. Uh, the 360 and PS3 versions aren't getting it. Um, but it is it allows you 
to upload photographs to the 2K servers and import your likeness onto the heads of custom wrestlers. Um, also, you can make tat really cool tattoos in the game. Um, you can make uh, t-shirt designs, stuff like that, signs uh, using your own, own graphics. But it's going to take a little bit of Photoshop expertise, the guy said, uh, to cut around your face and get it like matched up with the custom wrestler face. But it's still kind of a cool feature. What do you guys think? There was a Tony Hawk feature in like one of the underground games that I think did mm -hmm. this. Um, <laughs> like you could like upgrade, upload a picture and it would automatically map it. But no, that's cool. I mean, yeah, it's going to take a little bit more for the skill to, to pull it off. But man, yeah, I remember definitely. making, I remember, you know, trying, I, I was not successful making bitmaps that would skin your quake player back in the day, you know? Um, I did it with these cars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's yeah, I not, it. that's nothing new. But but the, it's cool that they're giving that accessibility to like consoles. Like we're at that point, you know. This may be a real redneck thing to say, but I I just signed dirt track late models for dirt track racing just... and up uploaded them into the game. Wow! So that was cool. Nice. But uh, but yeah, um, uh, the 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 game is is gonna be pretty cool. Um, but they're they're not integrating the connect feature that was in uh the NBA 2K uh game thing but that made like the blobby faces <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so, probably for the best <laughs> yeah i think it's for the best but yeah it's, it's a little unique take on getting your your face into a game and i th i think it actually looked better from what the guy was designing on the website so there's that all right uh, our next story is uh twitch is allowing developers to show their games off on uh twitch um and by showing them off designing the games you can actually watch the developers design the games on twitch and you can comment in the chat room uh, polygon reported uh that this went live on october 16th uh, after the idea was suggested at pax prime at the end of august wow you're gonna say something sort uh no i think it's pretty cool as i always loved kind of the the back the background stuff and this is for someone that's hardcore into checking this out yeah exactly um, i mean um, another another thing is it's really good for um game designers that have their games on Kickstarter because it gives them an instant feedback with, with their backers and gives the, the, the backers a chance to communicate while working on the game, like with the, the developers. Like if they have an idea, like do this, do that, they can change it right while they're watching. And, and like probably, if they have any feedback. Probably, probably also really big. Cause I, 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 you know, is it aspiring developers or is it other developers that are going to check in on this? You know, it's yeah, it, it's really good for any developer that has go like full on crowdsourcing. I, I kind of like yeah. the idea. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool idea. All right. Uh, the GTA sound. I thing, think um, it's a horrible sorry. idea. You think it's a bad idea? Uh, yeah, because I can just see jackasses like myself going <laughs> in and doing nothing but trolling them the whole time yeah, they're well, working their true. asses off. Like, like people like, being... Hey, you put that semicolon <laughs> in the wrong spot. Now your entire code is fucked. Put your character in a tutu. <laughs> you forgot to close that bracket, noob. <laughs> yeah. Boom. <laughs> or just like, are you sure you want to put that there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good I idea. Mean, I, I trolled you guys while you were playing yeah, video games for charity. For charity. For what, me, what makes you think I'm not <laughs> gonna go on some random uh, developer channel and be like, uh, I'm not sure if you want to open that bracket right there, buddy? Hey. Uh, is, that an if, is that an if statement? <laughs> yeah. I hated if statements in Excel. Ugh. You got your, you got both options there. Huh? Huh? Did you close <laughs> Excel, all the brackets? Try action script. My God. <laughs> Anyhow. That's my, my thought on it. All right. Anybody else have any thoughts before we move on? LB, but what do you think of this? I'm an asshole. So. <laughs> LB, what do you think of this? Uh, who wants to watch somebody code? Other coders. <laughs> there was a show. It, just, it no, goes no, no, to wait, show wait. that there is an audience for everything. Well, okay. On. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, the, the LB, you're, you're, you're a designer, right? Are you interested in seeing other people design? Are you interested in seeing like, Gabe draw the Penny Arcade strip at all? Yes, I am. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Now, now to a coder, 
coding is interesting. Or to somebody who is like, well, I don't well, know how they make video games. It's not just going to be coding either. It's going to no. be like design and stuff of like the characters. Yeah, well, yeah wouldn't you like be that. interested in checking out somebody who's, I don't know, designing a Minecraft character or a more exciting we, game? A, a, a we, Shadows we, of Mind game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you want to watch Joe Madreira design characters for his video game? There you go. Like, 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 do you think like, like I'm excited about the new Shadows of Mordor game, right? Mm -hmm. And and, let me put in context for you there. Um, And I want to kind of like get like even more of a sneak peek into that, you know, like, do you, do you, do you think it's something that you'd be into? Uh, Yeah, I could, I I understand what you're saying and I see what you're getting at, but uh, I, I don't know. I feel that it's different. You know what I mean? I, I I don't go to the movies to watch someone write a movie. No, no, but you get you get special edition DVDs to mm-hmm. listen to the commentary, commentary track. Like yeah. this is for those people. Like this yeah, isn't but... for this isn't for a casual or even hardcore video game player. This mm-hmm. is a person that's like I live, breathe video games and want to know how they're made, and I'm really curious about that. Like I used to get the next gen comics or not comics, the next gen magazine because it really delved into the development cycle this right this is why discovery channel has shows about how things are made yeah oh this <laughs> like could be a reality show hey 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 i watched the crap out of the the there you go oh sorry lb i, I, I didn't i didn't hear shows. hear you lb you got kind of stepped on i said uh, it just goes like i said before this is it goes to show there's an audience for absolutely anything oh yeah, on the internet. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's just final as niches hey people listen to our shows all right, you guys want to get into shows some... are amazing, sword. You guys want to get into some, some cool video game new, music news? Sure. All right. No. Oh. All right, this Rockstar. You're gonna hear it anyways. Rockstar is kicking it old school with a limited edition soundtrack uh, bundles. Uh, some in, are in CD form. They're doing a bundle in vinyl record form. Okay. They're going to be on on online at retailers starting uh, December 9th. Uh, the CD collection includes three discs, a USB drive branded with the GTA 5 lettering, and in the form of a gold brick. I guess it's going to look like a gold brick. Uh, and you also get artwork and a poster. Uh, the vinyl set uh, is going to be six colored records, uh, like some are blue, some are like neon pink. Uh, a full colored booklet and an exclusive lithograph poster. Uh, the, the collections include all 59 tracks that were on, plus uh, the original score to the games. So, wow! That's cool. Yeah, that's for like the hardcore GTA fans. Wow! Like, yeah. I remember when they first released like the set of this is the music in San Andreas, mm-hmm. and it was like five. Well, or I remember six when CDs. they did it for uh, Vice City too, because yeah. Vice City was all eighty. Oh yeah, it was amazing! Yeah, that was, that was like one of the best video game soundtracks of all time. So I would buy that one again. Really I actually good. enjoyed the soundtrack to GTA Four more than I enjoyed the actual game. <laughs> I, I love, like Cousin Roman. One the, thing uh, the, the soundtracks for those games were always amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's certain games that I, I like the soundtracks for. Um, the GTA games, just because of the mix. And uh, the DJ Hero games, because of a different form of mm-hmm. mix. So I, I, the mashups from the DJ Heroes are really cool to listen to outside of the game. I never got into the G- DJ Hero games. I should have. Uh, you can find the uh, <laughs> yeah, the controller yeah. the controller game for like twenty bucks. Yeah, probably probably less than that at Big Lots and stuff like that. I, I got it for twenty at the exchange. Oh wow! So then I think uh, Brother Sword got it for like ten or fifteen. Nice somewhere. Cool. I might have to check that out and see if I can find it. All right. Um, we have some more GTA news. Uh, Rockstar ha- has confirmed that Grand Theft Auto V will be getting a first-person mode on PS4 and Xbox One uh, when it comes out November 18th. Uh, the uh, Rob Nelson, he's the uh, Rockstar Games animation director, told IGN that we could have put it in the last-gen version, but we were too busy making the game. I don't know <laughs> why he would say that, but okay. Um, but yeah, it, it, you're going to be eye-level with the people on the street. Um, as you walk past them, uh, you you can see them sort of look at look at you from the corner of the eye. He said also, um, and he said all this stuff existed uh, bef- in the game before, um, and they added a lot of little details to it to make it like 
the first person mode. Does this? Do you guys think we got gypped on the uh, the regular 360 and PS3 versions, or do you think this is something extra that you just don't need? This is something extra that no one needs. I agree with Chachi. I've played games that are meant to be third person in the first person view, and it's never very good. Hmm. All right. Okay, we're going to move on here. Um, guys, uh, I know Lunchbox, you've been playing a lot of Civilization lately. I have, uh, because I beat Shadows of Mordor, and I still need to kill. Um, <laughs> how... how, how... How is Gandhi treating you in the game? I think uh, you are Gandhi, right? Well, here's the thing. I am Gandhi. Okay. And uh, I was uh, I was teamed up with um, uh, Suleiman, and uh, Gan or, uh, Montezuma Madden. decided to declare to declare war on my friend. So I summoned up some giant metal robots and I wiped him off of the map. I wiped nice. the map clean from him. <laughs> so I lived up to Gandhi's reputation. Well. Gandhi's Gandhi, civilization reputation. Gandhi in civilization is a dick. You know why? In the original civilization, it was because of a bug. Each leader in the game had an aggression rating, and Gandhi, Gandhi to reflect his best, uh, his real world persona the, the best, was given the lowest score possible, a one. Okay? He was so low that he was rarely, <laughs> he'd rarely, if ever, go out of his way to declare war on somebody. Only there was a problem. When a player adopted a democracy in civilization, uh, their aggression would automatically be reduced by two. Okay. If Gandhi went democratic, his aggression would, wouldn't go down to negative one. It looped back around to the high level of 255, <laughs> making him as aggressive in, as ever in civilization. And he would just nuke the crap out of everybody and be, like, really aggressive. Huh. So... I thought that was kind of a cool thing, and, and and like Gandhi's this peaceful person, you know, in real life, and then his civilization counterpart, because of a bug, is just a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Well, see, I know the funny thing about that is, anytime Gandhi was on the same map as I mm -hmm. in Civilization, I just went ahead and crushed him immediately because <laughs> I knew he was going to put up a fight. <laughs> and most of the time when that happened, he was right next to me, so it was the easiest to do. I'm like, Gandhi, you have this land. I kind of want that land. And so, yeah. <laughs> I would just I would, I would, would just kick Gandhi around. Nobody puts Gandhi in a corner. Oh, I put him in the <laughs> ground. It, it, uh, it was a Gandhi flower. Poor Gandhi. Can't we all just get along? Nope. <laughs> I took out. I always took out Gandhi, and then I'd always take out uh, the British hmm. because they seem to be dicks. I was I, always, like them. I, I was usually Britain when I played, or America. Hashtag America. I was always yeah. America. <laughs> all right. Our final story um, comes from Call of Duty. The new uh, Advanced Warfare was released. Uh, there's a kind of awkward scene in it. Um, slight spoiler alert. Um, one of the characters in the game dies, um, and you go to his funeral. Somebody dies in a game about yeah. war? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty war. much. Um, but the, the awkward part of the funeral scene is they tell you to press X to pay your respects to the fallen comrade. <laughs> so? I, but it, it, they're trying to I, – I know what they're trying to do. But it, it's, I don't know, it's just like, they're trying to put emotion into the game where the next minute you're, you're off and, shooting. And, and, and the respects you, is what? Like you, you salute or you, you, know, no, you move on? You kind of look at the casket and put your hand on the casket, I guess. From I, what think, I, Bobby. I think it's instigating an action. I, I don't think there's any problem with this at all. Well, no, I mean... But, like, people were making fun of it. Like, Conan played it on his Clueless Gamer thing, and he just really, like, ripped it. Um, but it also took him 59 times to cross the street in one section of the game that he was playing. <laughs> well, <laughs> so. first off, it's Conan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the guy gets paid to rip. Yeah, he gets paid to rip on things. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's, it's become like an internet thing to make fun of this, this scene. You're they talking to the guy. You're, you're talking to the guy that entered a berserker's rage when 
uh, Riley the dog in the last Call of Duty game yeah. got injured. All right? That's true. Um, there was not a, a bad guy in the immediate battle afterwards that I did not kill with a bullet to the face. Hmm. Um, but there was a really good article on Polygon about this. Uh, it was called Call of Duty Press X 2 more. Uh, but I, I suggest reading it. It's it's a pretty good uh, opinion piece. Um, I can't remember who wrote it. Let me check here. Um, uh, Charlie Charlie Hall, his name was. So, kudos to Charlie Hall for for evoking that. Um, but the final round question uh, kind of ties in with with this. Uh, with Call of Duty game trying to evoke emotions from gamers, uh, our friend friend of the show, Buddy Landell at Landell Three. Pose this question: uh, What games have made you cry, or made you close to cry? Uh, the Last of Us had made him cry twice. That is going to be the one I'm, I'm going to say because right at the beginning of that game, you're hit with something real heavy, and then a little later on, you're hit with something more heavy. Um, and also, I would say Red Dead Redemption is another one that almost had me. You know. um, do you guys have any? I have. Hello? I'm here. Okay. I have never cried to a video game. Really? Ever. Not even Ever. No. I've gotten angry <laughs> at video games, but I've never cried to a video game. <laughs> Lunchbox, how about you? I don't know. I'm sure there's been something, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. I, give you a second there. Um, uh, uh, games that make me the feels. Well, sometimes I just have the feels because I, the game is over. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, my God. It's I used to end. cry when I beat game, games as a kid. Like, I used to get emotional <laughs> after beating Mega Man 2. Yeah. And he's done. <laughs> that was and he's rough. sitting on the hill. And then it flashes. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the, there's nothing left but the helmet. And you're like, what happened to Mega Man? <laughs> Is he coming back? Does he not? Like, why? That was did, he, did he self-destruct? What? That was the one where what? he was walking sadly through the jungle, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. It's like, why are we doing this? <laughs> why? This is like, 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 how many of us that like Mega Man and other Nintendo games were your first glimpse into like the weird Japanese culture that will become all the effed up anime <laughs> that we've experienced in, in college? Um, yep. Started with Mega Man uh, and maybe Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, but but other than that, more recently, uh, definitely, and I, I've I've mentioned this several times on Twitter uh, to, to, in, but in response to Buddy, and I, and I think I was talking with Zach Gowan about this a while ago when I was playing it. Um, Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. I was playing on Xbox 360. Uh, you go through the whole thing, and it's like, oh, you're helping them, and there's a lot of like really cool, like you ride a you know a little griffin baby thing for a while after you've helped save it after it was captured like really kind of kind of low level stuff but then you gotta go through one place and you see like 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 there was a fire in a house and you can tell it was like the significant other and they were hanging from a tree because they noosed themselves because somebody died in the fire Oh, Jesus. Like it was like messed up stuff. Like it, it, it went from limbo like has it. it was like it went from like a yeah, limbo's really good with that too. Uh it goes from like this sweet story about brothers to to that to what happens at the end. And because after a game spoilerish, but uh uh warning, but after going to a game where you've attached these this idea of these two kids, these two people <laughs> characters working together and you working together with them then you took one away <laughs> yeah so I, it was it was really really well done so another another good example of that is um uh uh walking dead game from telltale a lot of people said that's really emotional i never got to the end of that one but people said they were like emotional over that game just because we got attached cried. to characters go ahead, oh, go ahead. no go ahead I always cried when the top bun fell in burger time. <laughs> that is sad, though. Uh, <laughs> I, um, uh, I can't think of a game that has actually made me cry. I can think of games that, you know, evoke certain emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, Final Fantasy VII is actually one of them. Um, I think it was just because, like, where I was at the first time I played it, it, it always takes me back to that time in my life. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and as far as recent games, I, I just recently finished Broken Age. 
um, from Double Fine, and that is a really, really good game, and it has some very emotional moments, and uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I highly recommend it to everyone, and I'm, I can't wait for the part two to come out. Cool. All right. Uh, the, when, I think, uh, oh, go ahead, Chachi. Frogger drowns. <laughs> he can't drown. Can he? He does. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in the lily pad. Yeah, whenever Frogger yeah, drowns, I, I swear a little tear. Because I'm sad for the frog that can't swim. I'm sad for the ghost on Pac-Man because they, they didn't get to finish their lives. <laughs> All right. That's on that sad, on that sad note. Uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter on at InsertCoinTV. You can visit us at InsertCoinToBegin.com. Uh, new articles going up daily. And you can join us live each and every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, uh, for... Sorgatron at Chachi says at DJ Lunchbox. I'm at Bobby FJ Town. Game over. Game over yeah! This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com. The human Torch. <laughs> That's not our intro music. It is now. Are you, are you, are you, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the new improved boss battle. <laughs> Mouth noise edition. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun one. I'm going to use that now. <laughs>